misstep on the governor's um, uh, behalf. Um, certainly, there's some there are cuts that we need to make, but where those cuts have been taken are wrong, and I um, am very disappointed in my opponent's approval of cuts in education. Now, Larry has said that he favors cutting the pensions for public employees and teachers. He called them an elite class. But he also said at the same question at the candidates' night in Exeter that he'd accept his state pension. What's your opinion on that position? I believe that there's opportunity to look at pension plans that are offered to public employees and get at a happy medium where it is there's equal cost shared not only by the government but by employees as well. Um, some of the examples of that would be, for example, well, when we saw the downturn in the stock market, one of the ways that we could have compensated for that was to ask employees at that time, perhaps, to contribute more towards their pension, because government has to as well. And it, when the conditions get better, as the stock market has climbed out of the hole that it was you know, in in 2007, 2008, then you can ratchet those amounts back. I'm not ready to say that defined benefit pensions should be eliminated. One, we have a commitment to current retirees and we have to follow through on that. I think we can look at things such as increasing the amount of time that you vest in order to get into a defined benefit plan or the number of years that you work. There's definitely not equality among public employees on defined benefit pensions in the number of years that you have to work. I think those are the kinds of things that we can look at. But there has not been truly a bipartisan effort to really address how we, we get around mm -hmm. that problem. I recognize that it's an issue for retirees as well as for taxpayers, but I think there's ways to address it. Well, Wall Street bankers defrauded pension funds across the country of $7 trillion, this, the credit default swaps, the CDOs, all that stuff. Why should taxpayers and employees have to now pony up that money to replace it? That has been, whether you get a defined benefit co uh, pension plan, a, um, you know, a, a defined contribution plan, or you just simply have your own IRA, you're self-funded, all of us have truly been impacted by that issue. And I, do, I agree. I think you're saying it's not fair, and I agree with that. What's your opinion of Governor Corbett not having prosecuted a single banker for fraud in Pennsylvania while he was Attorney General? I really have not taken a close look at that, John, and that's something that I would like to review, but I, I couldn't provide an answer on that right now. Any other questions? Judy, how much of this would you say, because of the political campaign that's going on now, is political posturing to the extreme, both with Democrats and Republicans? We have, we have a governor coming off with a 50 percent cut. You're basically saying 10. We average Americans faced with deficits in our government, also faced with education needs. We're getting a little political haze here going on just because of the election. Would you care to answer honestly, where do you think, what's the real story here in terms of what's needed and what we have to do? All I can tell you is that when you talk to real people, when you talk to students, and as a dean of a college, I talk to many students that are coming out of college with forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in student debt from their college education. Now when you talk about raising uh, tuition, because that's the only way that Penn State and some of these other institutions can respond, Temple, Pitt, um, that's real. That's, that's not political posturing. They truly are going to be finding um, unsustainable debt levels for student loans and in turn possibly not finding a great environment to get a job. That's not about politics. That's about how real people live. And I think that's a big concern. I wouldn't deny that, you know, when you're in a political campaign, there, o there often is a lot of discussion and there's a variety of viewpoints. But when you get back down to it, when people are going to have to pay more, and no one will deny that. You can talk to school superintendents as well as school board members, average people on the street. They know that if the state cuts, somebody has to make up their sh that shortfall. There's no free lunch. Given the realities of the political situation in Pennsylvania, as in Wisconsin now, do you think there's movement between the Republicans and Democrats if you are elected to reach a middle, or how hard will that be? I think um, there's been, I think, a, a state legislature, 
both Republicans and Democrats have been, been very closely following what's happened in Wisconsin, Ohio, and I think um, they don't necessarily want to enter that same fray. It's not necessarily productive for either side. And I know if I were in Harrisburg, I would be the voice for making sure that there's a bipartisan effort to address that. Governor Corbett has said, and I applaud him for saying, that he's not interested in addressing collective bargaining rights. That does, that's not to say necessarily, though, that the state um, Senate, particularly the Republican majority, won't want to address that. And he could use that as a vehicle to, to get at that issue. And I will, I, you know, I certainly will not support that. I support the opportunity for us to sit at the table and discuss how do we get over the issues that we're facing right now. Doesn't seem to happen anymore.